what's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the GigaPower GigaSource Grassor. Their version of a G1 slag. All those G's are definitely a mouthful. So this came out a while ago. This is actually a reissue. This was sent to me by Mr. G Tony. Once again he's sending me these gigantic robots. This one I actually purchased from him. I just couldn't take anything else for free. I was starting to feel really bad. So I did buy this for a pretty good price, but um, I really appreciate him, you know, giving me a chance to look at these. Now that I have it in hand, it really is beautiful. Let's take a quick 360 with the G1 cartoon over there, so you can take a look. I do have his G1 style head, the red head on there. You can see it's pretty much 100% painted or chromed all throughout. Even the back, you know, it's just gorgeous to look at all this paint and detail. Really nothing left untouched except maybe these thighs. There's nothing left unpainted or untouched. So beautifully done. He does come with a lot of accessories. So let's go over those. First you get his blaster here. It does have a button here on the back to turn it on and off. I don't have the batteries in here. I assume it lights up red and that's fine. Not going to bother with that. And it does have the typical masterpiece style handle, so you just get that pigged in the hand, and then the fingers fit around to hold that in place. You also get the translucent sword. This also has a button here, which I don't have batteries for. Nice smooth, oh, we have a little bit of styrofoam there. Nice smooth look to this sword. I actually really like the look of these Giga Power swords. And there you go. There he is with his sword. You also get an alternate head. This is actually the head that's on him to begin with. So it's got the black helmet with the red visor and then the silver face. So you just basically pull it off of this joint. It's a little bit tight. So there's the original and there's the alternate head. So I obviously prefer the alternate head that comes in the box just because it's more G1 and I like the yelling kind of face that looks good. I do wish they colored in the mouth black. I can probably do that myself, but there you go for that. I actually wish the same thing for the prior figure too. I wish they had colored it in, but that looks really nice on there. Really beautiful. You do have metallic paint, so because this is the metallic version, we have metallic paint, so the red, instead of being a flat red, is this shiny red. All the chrome is really shiny and then all of the silver and the blue is also metallic. So all that looks really nice. Uh, continuing on with the accessories, you do have this gun. Now, I don't remember him having this weapon in his uh, cartoon mode, but you do get him. It's really meant to be mounted in the vehicle mode or sorry, in the vehicle mode, in the dyno mode, but in this mode, there's not really a place to put it. I think it ends up there in the dyno mode. But here, there's not really a place. I guess you could stick it into his shoulders right here. Kind of like sidearms. But those look really nice. We'll look at those more when we get to the dyno mode. All right. You also get these pieces right here which at first I was kind of wondering, is this for a different figure? But you know, it's actually for this one. So if you prefer the look of having his legs on the outside, you can do that here. So you go ahead and bend this downwards. Open up this tab right here. You might need a spudger, but mine opened up. Fold this backwards. You're gonna take this leg, bring that to the outside, and then just close this back up and tab that back in. And then you come to the inside here and you can see now there's a big cavity there. So this is basically a cavity filler. So if you prefer to have his legs on the outside, well, you can adjust it however you like. And I'll take a look to find out exactly how that goes. But There's two pegs here. Those are going to fit inside here. There's two holes for it to tab into. And there you go. Now you got that nice painted look. So if you prefer to have this I guess it's more of a toy look, then you can have that. 
Me personally, I prefer having the leg on the inside. It's just a cleaner look, more G1 accurate, makes more sense to me. All right, now let's go over his articulation. Pretty well articulated for a big guy here. So the head is on a ball joint and goes up to there, down to there. A little bit hindered on the turn because it ends up colliding with this dyno head back here. You can kind of get things moved out of the way, um, but you have to be very careful because there's metallic paint here. There's a lot of places to scratch it. When we get to dynamite, I'll try to show you. There is a little scratch already, and it kind of came in with that scratch. It's hard to show you, but there's a little scratch from itself. It just scratched itself in the box. So you just have to be careful when you move things around on this thing. Uh, but you get pretty good movement, you get the side to side look. These arms rotate all the way around, a nice strong ratchet, out to the side on an even stronger ratchet. It's amazing the, the strength of the ratchets they use on these Giga Power. Really nice tight rotation at the bicep. Tight joint at the elbow, gets you 90 degrees. Rotation at the wrist. The fingers are individually articulated, similar to fans toys, except you do get the splay out. And they are pinned, which is my preference to have them all pinned. I hate when they're not pinned because then they come apart. Um, so these can do really anything you want. Very, very nice fingers. And thumb, same thing. You've got one joint in the middle and then you have a ball joint and you can move it in any direction. And they hold the weapons pretty well. Rotation at the waist. Although I would be careful because you do have metallic paint there, but it does rotate all the way around. Coming to the back here, you do have these wings. They move in and out just a little bit, but then there's also this extra movement here. So you can get that kind of folded as far back as possible. I think that looks the best. It makes his wings look just a little bit better. And then the amount of detail on here is just really nice. Coming back to the legs here, you have the thighs. If you move these hip skirts out of the way, there's three hip skirts, one on each side. Goes up to there. Out to there, really strong ratchet, and then out to the back on another strong ratchet. You have a rotation at the thigh, pretty good movement there. 90 degree bend at the knee, although it's a little bit hindered, I can't get it past there. So, But for a big guy like this, I wouldn't expect too much there. You do have this joint, which is really meant for transformation. I wish it would lock in place, but it doesn't. Um, but it is a nice strong ratchet. And then this foot here is where there's a problem. So you're meant to pull this down and it's supposed to stay tabbed in here. Unfortunately, the tab broke actually on both sides. That little tab broke. I'll show you the piece. It's in the box. But basically, it's meant to have a little T-joint that fits inside the back of this foot. So as you push this down, it'll basically hold this uh, heel up here. But because it's detached, you actually get a lot more movement out of it. So I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a good thing because now you can move this foot a lot more. So you can move this piece as well on its own independently to the side. And then also you can rotate the foot. So you get quite a bit of movement out of that toe. And I think it looks pretty nice. And just to be complete, there are the two little T pieces. You can see they broke off there from inside of his foot here. Not a big deal. Honestly, it doesn't affect anything. I don't really seem to mind or it doesn't seem to be any issue with it, but just wanted to be aware these were broken in the box when it came. Now there is Grassor next to the Fans Toys version of Slag and the KOMP44. So just as you can see a height difference. Um, and you could see it's a lot bigger than the Fans Toys version. I kind of like the size on this one. The Fans Toys one was actually the smallest of the entire Dinobot set. It did always feel a little too small. So this one does look right. Unfortunately, this is too big to fit into the Fans Toys. If you're trying to replace your Fans Toys version, it's not going to fit in with the rest of them. But on its own or with the rest of the Giga Power set, really good scale. Looks nice. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his Dino mode. Pretty simple and fun transformation. So let's start on the arms here. Go ahead and lift up the arms, open up this panel. And this is a little bit tricky. You do have to have the fingers folded up in a certain way. So I recommend you straighten out the fingers and get them folded as flat as you can on the top surface here. That's gonna allow you to fold it in here. I do find sometimes it's hard to get them back out. But if you put them this way, it's a lot easier to get back out. If you put it the other way, sometimes it's it's hard to get out. So you really have to have them like perfectly, perfectly flat. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. 
So get them get them straightened out and then fold them up into here like so and then close up the thing. You can straighten up this toe. Same on this side, open this up. Make sure you have the fingers pushed in as far as you can and then get those into there and close that up. Straighten out the toe. Come to the back here. We're gonna work on the legs next. So the legs are you know slightly more tricky, not not you know anything crazy. Open up this panel here, flip open this tab that's gonna allow you to bring this down. Then you can flip this out, which is gonna be the hind legs. Close that back up and then reattach that pin. Close that up. Come to here, you can unpeg this from here. Take the entire waist and rotate it around the other direction. Rotate at the thighs, so you basically get, and every slag seems to transform this way. But we're gonna do the same thing here. Go ahead and get these arms out of the way. So the best way to get them out of the way is rotate them up and out like this. That gives you the most clearance. And that's gonna allow you to clear uh, over here. Hopefully that wasn't off camera. But get them up and out of the way like that. Take these horns, you can rotate them to the front. You really can have them, have them whatever way you want, but I like to have them like that. Go ahead and take these back pieces. And make sure you lift up this head off of this joint here. Fold this down. Fold the head inwards and then peg that back in. And just be careful with all that. There's a lot of nice metallic paint here. You don't want to scratch up. After you do that, you can pull this head forward and down. So it ends up kind of like that. And that's going to give you the room back here to get these wings into place. So push them inwards and tab them together. Don't close these just yet because we have to get these leg pieces in place. So open up this panel here. That's going to sit just like that. Now we can fold this inwards, lift up that foot. And this is going to sit underneath, so make sure you get that closed. Then close this down and that's going to tab in. Right? And uh, this should stay tabbed together. Fold this leg down, open this up. It's going to pull out of here. You do have to fold this panel down slightly, otherwise you're going to have a hard time pulling that leg out. So fold it down like that straight. 90 degrees, and that'll allow you to pull the leg downwards. Now you can close this up. Come to the bottom here, use this tab to kind of get a hold of this foot. And you're going to use that to basically pull the foot out. And you can use a spudger if you want to. In fact, I think I will use a spudger here. So get that foot out of here and straight forward. And so that's one side pretty much done. You can go ahead and take this arm, straighten that up. So same thing on this side. Since it is somewhat complicated, I'll show it again. So go ahead and rotate this leg to the outside. Open up this panel. Flip out that little tab there. Allow you to open up this. Flip the leg to this side. Close this back up and tab that back in. Come over here, flip this panel out. Unpeg the tail. Now before we get this all pegged in, we do want to get this tail kind of squared away. So go ahead and get this to fold down. Make sure you have the that piece angled correctly. And when you're trying to put this in, if you do it after it's all closed up, it's going to be very hard because there's no clearance. And then this panel ends up going downwards on you. So you got to hold that in place and peg it into the back. So you can see that's going to peg in right there and there. Right, now that you got that, go ahead and open up this rear tail piece. I have had heart trouble with getting this, so I just use a spudger to get in between there and get that tail out. Fold it 90 degrees, rotate it, and then open it up all the way. Or, sorry, fold it 45 degrees, rotate it, and then open it up all the way. Same on this side. 
fold this tail down. Make sure you get the angle right. Don't just force it. And hold this body panel up and get it tabbed into the back here. And make sure you get it tabbed on the bottom as well. So you just have both tabs in. Again, use the spudger or something to get this out. Rotate, fold it back, and then rotate it out the way. All right, now we can get this all situated into here. So get this down into here and peg this all together so you can start back here, get those pushed together, get the middle pushed together. Now we can put that panel down. Remember to fold this down, fold this panel halfway, pull the leg out and then close that up. Get your toe Fold it outwards. Now you can put this leg back down. Again, I'm going to put this down all the way. And that'll allow you to open up these here. Horns you can kind of situate however you want. Come to the bottom here, pull his mouth out, rotate it around, and then push that all the way to the back. So it just pushes on a panel there. Bring the cannon out of the mouth, fold that down and back into the mouth. And again, you can leave that open or close it. I'm going to leave it open for now. And just make sure you have all these panels pressed in together. On the bottom here you can put these feet all the way down, although just be careful because it is a nice chrome. I don't want to scratch up that chrome, so I'd probably recommend putting a little piece of plastic or something there to protect that chrome. Or you can just leave it upwards a little bit. And there we have Grassor transformed all up into his dyno mode. Just just amazing to look at. So look at all the detail on this thing. I mean, I already had a lot of detail, but all of it comes through in this dynamo. You've got the translucent here with the silver behind it. You've got the silver, red, blue, green. All that detail there. Here's the back. You've got the chromed out tail. I mean, just really good looking. It does have red eyes. You can actually switch these out. If you don't like the red, you can put on uh, green. I believe it comes with the green sticker. I prefer the red, so I'm not just gonna leave that alone. Um, actually, the red, eye, those green eyes might be for the translucent piece, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Here is the mouth cannon. So the mouth, it does actually move back and forth. You can get this all the way back. And then you can get this cannon open. Um, be careful getting this, especially when it butts up against the red paint. You don't wanna scrape that paint. It is very easy to scrape, so just be careful. But you can't open this mouth up basically all the way. You can get that cannon aimed. And that cannon also goes backwards and forwards, so if you want to stow that away, you can stow that back up into the top of his mouth. But that's a really nice feature. You can move these back and forth. You can move these, I guess, head pieces in different directions. That does feel really nice and sturdy. The arms rotate around on the shoulder joint just like it did on the arm. You can go out to the side all the way up to there so you can get kind of wide out. You can bend at the elbow just like you could in the robot mode. And the toe does tilt forward and backwards just a bit. Come to the back legs you have a rotation here. You have a butterfly that goes in and out in all directions. You have a tilt here at the knee, not ratcheted. This is about the only thing on the entire figure that's not ratcheted, but it's still nice and tight. Then you have a toe tilt here, up and down. So you can get some pretty good walking poses. On the back here, you have a tilt here, and you have, let's see, is there a tilt here? No, it looks like that, that's just fixed. So either way, that looks really good. Great, great figure and great, uh, Posability there. You can take those gun pieces I showed you earlier and mount those here. But there you go. There he is with the cannons. I haven't found a way to mount either of these things, so those are just going to sit alongside it. But really, really beautiful. Another accessory we have in the Dyna mode is the translucent plastic covers to make it look more like the G1 toy. So go ahead, this one is going to fit right here onto the head. You're going to take this piece here, 
They actually have two of these. These are going to fit onto the tail. You can see where it fits onto the top. There's a little square pieces there. So go ahead and get those. Those are just going to fit on there. So you get a nice translucent tail piece there. And then lastly you've got these here which are going to fit on the top of the tail. And again you've got the square pieces. That's how you know how they fit together. So just put those on there. So now you've got the translucent tail and the translucent head. It really looks nice. And if you want, if you don't like the red eyes, they do give you these green eyes, which you can, I believe, is intent is to put it on here. Don't quote me on that. This might be for something else. But I believe you can either put it here or you can just keep the red eyes. Although it's possible this is for another uh, Dinobot from Gigasaur. And for a quick size comparison, that is next to the MP10 and the teeny tiny Masterpiece Hound. So you can see he towers over these guys, which makes a lot of sense. He's a dinosaur, he should be big. I don't know if that's in real life scale or whatever, it doesn't matter, but in the show, these Dinobots were really big. So this works for me, it's perfect. Final thoughts on the chrome grasser here. I think I've been saying metallic grasser this entire review, so <laughs> please ignore that. If you made it to the end of the review, then you'll know this is the chrome version. R stands for chrome. The metallic version was the original release. Let's start with the positives. The paint is absolutely beautiful, spectacular, and really looks nice. It's, it's one of the things that stand out on this over any figure, not just Dinobots, but any figure in your collection. This is going to stand out. Uh, the overall size, proportions, and accessories all really work well. The detailing in the sculpt, although it's not quite G1, it's close enough and it can stand in with the rest of your collection, but it does stand out a little bit in a shelf just because it's so stylized and so different, but close enough to G1 that you can still make it work. Um, all angles look really good. The dyno mode looks really good. Negatives wise, not too many. This little break here is one of my negatives you know i wish that didn't break but honestly it actually provides a little bit more articulation so maybe it's a good thing um, only other thing i would complain about is there are some places where you need to be really careful especially up here where things collide and you can scratch off that metallic paint very easily and that's one of the weaknesses of the metallic paint is it scratches off um, but other than that i mean what a great figure what a great release i i Definitely don't, I'm not a fan of all of the Gigapower Dinobots. I didn't really love their Grimlock, but for sure this is the best version of a Masterpiece Slag that we've ever gotten. I can say that very confidently. It did also win the Versus with Fans Toys, so you can check out that video. that will be in the link at the end of this video. That's really it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.